Hello students, welcome back to another class with me and today we will be discussing about your chapter 17 that is population. Okay, so social science class 9 chapter 17 population. Okay, now when we talk about population, some of you or every one of you, you know what we meant by population, isn't it? So here when we say population, population means it is the total number of people, okay? The total number of people living in a particular area or living in a political or geographical area at a particular time. So that is called as population. And regarding this population, okay? It is very, very important and it is very necessary, okay? It is very necessary to know about it because when we look at the country, okay? Regarding a country or a government, okay? A government, they need to know about how many people are living there in the country, okay? Or what is the total area of that uh, places or their country and so on. And the reason why is if they know about this, okay? It will be very easy. That is, it will be easy for the government to uh, look after its people. Because if they know the total number of people, then they will also know how many people they are supposed to look after, right? So, basing on this, all those resources, everything, they will know about it. Then, apart from knowing about how many people are living there, okay, it is also very necessary for the government to know about the age group. We call it as the age group which we will be discussing later on in detail okay so when we talk about the age group okay it is also very necessary for the government to know how many children are living there in the country to know the number of children and the reason why is if it is to do with children then it is uh, we all know that the government needs to provide education isn't it the government needs to provide education for the people, that is for the younger generation. So here also the government, they need to know about the number. Then talking about older people, okay, if it is to do with the older people, here also the government, they need to know how many uh, older people are living there because they need to look after their health, okay, or to do with their economy, etc. So these are the reasons why the knowledge of population is very important and necessary especially for the government okay so as i've said population means the total number of people okay living in a political or geographical area at a particular time okay so that is called as population so in this chapter we are going to discuss about that okay so if you are ready let's go into it okay so the first one is Population, we have already discussed. Now, next to population, we call it as census, okay? Census. Now, when we say census, okay? Census means this is the process, okay? This is the process of counting, counting the population, trying to find out how many people are living there, okay? So, that is called as a census. In your textbook, it is written that, a census is the process of counting the inhabitants okay, of a defined area. And after they have done this, okay, after they have identified the number of people living in a definite area, what they will do is they will compile the figure. Okay? They will compile the figure and transform the figure into useful fact. So that is called as a census. Okay? So census means the uh, process of trying to count the number of people who are living in a definite area. And the reason why is so that they will compile the figure and they will use it for all those necessary things. Like the main thing will be to do with the voting system also, because all those who have reached the age of voting, we all know we have the right to vote, isn't it? So all these, the government will be able to know it, okay, only through census, okay? So census means the counting or the process of counting the inhabitants of a definite area, okay? So that is called as the census. Then the next one is, we call it as demography, okay? Demography or demography, okay? 
Now, when we talk about this demography, this is the statistical analysis and study of population, okay? So, demography means the statistical analysis and the study of population, okay? So, that is called as the demography. Here, we are focusing mainly on the definition because these are very, very important, okay? Then, the next one is, we call it as the distribution of population, okay? Distribution of population. Now, regarding this, okay, when you look around, if you look around, you will find that regarding the distribution, it is not equal, right? In some states, there are more popula uh, population comparing to another state. So some, in some states, people will be more, and in some area or in some state, the population will be less. So here, the distribution of population is not equal everywhere, okay? And the reason, the reason why the distribution of population, it differs from places to places, or why it differs from state to state is, this again depends on lots of factors, okay? One will be to do with this climatic condition also. Because some climate, it will be suitable for the, some people, isn't it? And for some, it will not be suitable. Or for example, those of us who are used to living in Kohima, you know that if you go down to Dimapur also, we find it so hot, right? The humidity is so high, so we find it difficult. So according to that, some may prefer to live in Dimapur, whereas some may prefer to live in Kohima, okay? So it depends on the climatic conditions also. Then they may also, it may also differ, uh, I mean like depend on the fertility of the soil. If the person is an agriculturist, okay, or if the person is a farmer, he will prefer to live in a state or to live in a place where the soil is fertile, isn't it? The soil is fertile because if the soil is fertile, then this farmer, he will be able to get a good harvest. So all these depends on the person, okay? Then it can also be to do with, uh, in your textbook, it is written as rainfall, isn't it? Whether it, it is suitable for that state or whether it is suitable for the people, the particular people, and so on. So regarding this distribution of population, why it is not equal everywhere is, mainly it is to do with the climatic condition, okay? So that is why this uh, population, it differs from state to state or from one place to another place, okay? Then coming to this uh, population density, okay? Population density. You can turn to page 238. Now here, when we say population density, what it meant is the average number of people who are living in a fixed area, okay? Population density means the number of people who are living in a fixed area. So that is called as the population density, okay? Then coming to, we have another uh, topic which is called as overpopulation, okay? Overpopulation. Now here, one thing you need to remember is when we say overpopulation, Many of you, you, be, uh, you may be thinking that where the people are too much, isn't it? Where there's so many people, of, uh, people living there in that particular area, isn't it? Now here, when we talk about overpopulation, overpopulation means, okay, what it meant is, this is a situation where, where the resources, okay, the resources that is found there in that particular area is not sufficient for those people who are living there. I hope you got my point, okay? Overpopulation, that is a situation when the resources are too few for the size of the population. So people are living there. Apart from the people, we also have these resources. So what happened here is those people who are living there in that particular area, the resources that are found there is not sufficient for them. So that situation is called as overpopulation, okay? It has nothing, to, I mean like it has not only to do with the number of people living there, but here it is to do with the resources also. So make sure you keep that in mind, okay? So overpopulation, that is a situation where the resources it's, is not sufficient for the people, okay? Those people who are living there, okay? So that is called as 
overpopulation. Because here, let's look at an example, okay? Now, when you talk about, let's say, United Kingdom, that is UK, UK, Britain, or England, same thing, okay? So, when we talk about UK, UK, okay, they have a population of 58 million, okay? They have a population of 58 million, but then for the uh, UK government, they don't take that as overpopulation, okay? It is not overpopulated, especially for the Britishers, even though they have 53 million people living there in UK. For them, it is not overpopulated or overpopulation. And the reason is because they have enough resources. Got it? They have enough resources for those people who are living there. That means those people who are living there, they have enough resources. They don't have any difficulty. They don't find any problem in using up the resources. So that is the reason why, even though they have so many uh, people living there, millions of people living there, for them, it is not an overpopulation problem, okay? Because they have enough resources. Whereas, if you look at India, okay? In India, we have this overpopulation problem. We have this problem, we are facing this problem because we don't have enough resources, okay? There is no enough resources for those people who are or for the whole of India. So for India, we have overpopulation uh, problem. But for the UK, they don't face that problem because they have enough resources, okay? So that situation is called as overpopulation. Got it? So I hope that is clear with you now, okay? Then coming to this another one, that is we call it as optimum population, okay? Optimum population. Now, when we say optimum population, this refers to the size of the population which produces maximum amount of goods. Got it? Optimum population means this refers to the size of population which produces maximum amount of goods and services with the help of its resources. So that is called as optimum population, okay? So here we have discussed about population, isn't it? Population means the total number of people living in a geographical area at a particular time. Then it is very important because through this, the government will be able to run smoothly. Then we have discussed about the different types. That is, we have discussed about the census, isn't it? The density, okay? Then we have also discussed about demography. Then we have also discussed about the distribution. That is why in some places, population is small comparing to other places. Then we have also discussed about this overpopulation. Now, let's come to the factors, okay? The factors that are determining population change, okay? Why there is a change in population? Because as I've said, in some states, population is more comparing to another state, isn't it? So here, the factors, the factors that are determining population change, here we have three factors, okay? The first one is, we call it as birth, okay? Birth means we are talking about the number of children, okay? The number of children being born. So that is one of the most important factor which is determining population, okay? So birth means the number of children that are being born, or in other words, it is also called as the fertility of the population, okay? So the first factor is birth. So that is the fertility of the population or the number of children being born, okay? Then the second factor is, we call it as the death rate, okay? Death rate or, in other words, we call it as the mortality also. And this is to do with the number of people, uh, sorry, the number of death, okay? The number of death that is occurring at a particular time. And so, as I've said, in other words, it is also called as the mortality, okay? The mortality. Then the third one, the third one is, we call it as migration, 
okay migration now migration as you are all aware migration means a situation where people moves from one place to another place okay Pe where people moves from one place to another place and there are lots of factors again there are lots of reasons why people move from one place to another place okay why they decide or they migrate to other places now when we talk about this migration okay this will be one reason will be because of employment okay that is people they will try to go to another place where there is scope of employment where there is chances that they will be able to get employment so in such cases people are going to migrate to another place isn't it then it can also be to do with uh, better opportunities okay better opportunities now for example you take kohima okay kohima we all know that is the capital isn't it it is the capital of nagaland and you if you look around okay you students many of you you will be aware that many of you you are not from here your parents have migrated here to kohima from the village and the reason why is because of better opportunity right your parents they want to go for better opportunities so that they will be able to look after you or you will be able to lead a better life or it can also be to do with education since many of the villagers okay they don't have good schools uh, set up there so what the parents does is they migrate to other places where the students their children can get better education or talking about many of our students okay those who have passed out uh, let's say their class 12 those who are taking science or even to do with arts also we see many of the students thousands of students migrating to other parts of india in order to get better education right so these are the reasons okay these are the reasons why people migrate from one place to another place okay so here the factors okay the factors that are determining population is as i've said one is called as the birth rate so birth rate means we are talking about the number of children being born okay and this birth rate in other words it is also called as the fertility okay then the second one is we call it as the death rate that is the number of death okay and this it can also be called as mortality okay the mortality rate then the third one is to do with the migration so these are the factors okay these are the factors which determine population regarding whether the uh, the state has more number of people living there or less number of people living there so this differs basing on these factors okay that is the factors which are determining population so till up to now we have discussed mainly to do with population that is we have discussed about the especially to do with the definition because those are the points which are going to be asked okay so first one is we have discussed about population so population means the number of people okay living in a particular area or living in a geographical area at a particular time so that is called as population and it is very necessary for the government to know about it okay to know about the population because if they know about it then the government will be able to do all those things that are needed for the people because as we are all aware we are living in a democratic country so the government is supposed to look after the people okay so that is one reason why population is important the study or the knowledge of population is important then we have also discussed about census okay then we have discussed about demography then we have discussed about this population density then overpopulation then we have also discussed about this optimum population and we have done till the factors that are affecting population and there we have discussed about the three factors isn't it so i hope you are keeping up with me okay in the for today we will just stop from there in the next session we will be discussing about all those uh, 
age component, the sex ratio, okay? Then the national policy, which we call it as NPP, which is very important, okay? So next session, we will be discussing about that. So I hope you will join me again in the next session. Thank you for tuning in and stay safe.